Hey everyone, welcome to my first video talking about tools. Now, as a disclaimer, I want you guys to know that this video is not sponsored by anyone. I bought all of these tools on this list with my own money and in fact, most of these were bought when I first started woodworking and they're things I still use all the time, if not on every single project. So I think whether you're a maker, a woodworker, or a weekend warrior, there's definitely something here for you, especially since we're just talking about things under 30 bucks. So many of you guys probably already know this, but I mainly use the metric system here in the shop. But since I live here in the good old USA, um, whenever I can, I try to get tools with both metric and imperial units on it. And that's why I use this 26 foot or eight meter long fat max tape measure that has both. And this thing sells in the store for $28 in the store, which Honestly, I think it's kind of expensive, but I don't know, maybe that's just how it is with tools that have both units on them. Um, there's definitely a lot more options and probably way better deals online, but at the time I was in the store, and this was years ago, I could only find this one and this smaller Milwaukee one that's six foot or two meters long. And this thing is pretty convenient to have on me for when I'm out shopping for lumber or just need to do some quick measurements in furniture stores. But over the past few years, this big one has been my main go-to for here in the shop. Now for more precise size layouts and measuring, one of the first tools I got when I started woodworking was this T-Rule from Incra and <laughs> this thing is crazy. So this one I have here is a metric and these holes are positioned at every quarter of a millimeter from zero to 150 millimeters. So you can get super precise with this thing. And there's also a six inch version one with holes positioned at every 164th of an inch, which uh, I can show you on this uh, 18 inch one I have right here every 164th of an inch, which is just way more precise than anything I need for most of my builds. But anyway, the prices on these fluctuate a lot. I've seen the small one go anywhere from $20 to $30. So yeah, definitely shop around for the best prices. Um, oh yeah, I don't recommend this big 18 inch one. It's way too soft and long, and we don't like soft and long. While I'm trying to mark something further away down the length of this thing, I find it a little difficult to control this reference side, and it tend to flex a lot. So that is why I don't recommend this. But if you're looking for something like this, I definitely recommend this shorter one. I think it is great for joinery work. Um, and another tool I got when I first started woodworking was this mini square from Woodpeckers. I think I got this thing for like, $15 around the holidays, which wasn't too bad, but it did lead to some other purchases. <laughs> yeah, kind of like a gateway drug. And look how small and cute this thing is. It's only 65 millimeters tall by 40 mils wide. And what is this, 10 mils or 12? So about half an inch thick. And so you might be asking me, what the heck am I gonna do with something that size, Alex? Well, I'm glad you asked because I actually use this thing a lot, especially for checking to see if my tools are square. And I'm not just talking about the larger tools I have, but also great for my plain blades and chisels because it has this notch in the corner to help prevent the blades from getting nicked. And I also use this all the time for checking to see if my lumber is square after milling and also to check for square on small projects that anything else might just be too big to fit into. And I feel like if you have this thing and this in critique, square you'll be able to handle a lot of joinery layouts and because this thing is so small I always have it in my pocket when I'm working here in the shop um, and speaking of pockets the pencil I always have in my pocket is the Pika Dry automatic pencil and I'm sure you guys have all seen me use this if you've seen any of my build videos I really like this thing because of these color refills that you can put in here now uh, I mostly work with walnut so regular graphite is just really hard to see so that's why I always have the white refills in this pencil so now my only complaint with this is I feel that these color refills wear down kind of fast because they're made from some kind of waxy material so I need to sharpen it quite often. Now on the other hand, these graphite refills are really durable because they're just so freaking thick, but they can still be sharpened to make some really fine lines. However, if you work with a lot of dark color woods like me, I highly recommend getting this pencil with some white refills. Right now these run at 13 for the pencil 
and a pack of white refills is $8.50 on Amazon. So not bad. But if you normally work with light colored woods and just want a pencil that's more durable but can still create fine lines, Pika Marker actually recently released this Pika Dry Automatic Pencil 0.9, which is just a regular mechanical pencil using 0.9 millimeter thick graphite. And this thing currently costs $14.70 for the pencil, a little less than $5 for a pack of refills. So not too bad. And I recently used this on some birch plywood for a build and I just really appreciated just how much more durable this 0.9mm lead was compared to the 0.5 or 0.7 ones I've used before. This thing never broke once, all the while still providing a really fine line for some precision work. And another thing I really like about this is that the 0.9mm thick lead fits perfectly perfectly into those machine holes in the woodpecker layout tools. So if you own any of those, this would be a perfect companion for them. And also, I guess, instead of a pencil sharpener on the cap, this one's got a built-in eraser on the end. And yeah, other than that, I don't know what else to say about it other than that it's just a really nice mechanical pencil. It's probably the best looking mechanical pencil that I own, but okay, let's talk about something else. So when I first started woodworking, I didn't have a drill press. So I got this drill block from Milescraft to help me drill some perfectly perpendicular holes. And believe it or not, this thing only cost $8. And for $8, we get six steel bushings for some of the commonly used drill bit sizes. And there are molded in guidelines on the sides to help with lining things up. So this thing is really easy to use. And now even though I have a drill press and other drilling jigs, I still use this thing all the time because sometimes the work pieces are just too large to be put on the drill press and sometimes it's impossible to use large jigs like when I had to drill holes under my desk to mount the holders for my electronics and other times I just don't feel like spending the time to set things up just to drill a couple holes so for eight dollars this thing is a fantastic investment um, the next thing I want to show you guys is this angle gauge from Wixie which is essential to me since I'm always making making things with different angles. And this thing is super easy to use as well. Just take a reference of the table saw surface first and then stick it on the blade since it's got magnets inside. And then just tilt the blade until it reads the angle that I want. Um, and I know someone's gonna ask me this in the comments below, so I'm just gonna answer it right here. So usually this gauge has given me really great results on regular four-sided cases with 45 degree miter ends. I haven't had any issues with accuracy. But if I'm making anything with more than four sides or a lot of different angles coming together, I might use something that's more precise like this thing from Woodpecker since all the small errors could start compounding together pretty quickly. But for most furniture builds, I think this thing is more than adequate. And at $27, it is much cheaper than that thing I have on the wall there. Okay, moving on. This is the Grip Block by Microjig, and not to be confused with the grippers, which are designed to be used at a table saw. The Grip Block is designed to be used at the jointer, bandsaw, and router table. And it's got the same green material underneath that helps to grip the workpiece like the grippers. And there are hooks here to grab onto the end of the board to help me push the workpiece through, which also retract away when they're not needed. These things are great, and I actually use these more than I use the grippers, and in fact, I rarely do any face jointing without these, and whenever possible, I will use them over at the router table too. Um, I just feel like I have a lot more control of the workpiece when I use these, and in turn, makes me feel safer. So I guess for $29 on Amazon, this is a pretty sweet deal for keeping these digits safe. Um, anyway, so the next couple of things I want to show you guys are for glue ups. And the first one I want to show you is the silicon glue brush from Rockler, which I have been using for a really long time. And these bristles are great for spreading glue out evenly on surfaces, and it's made out of silicon, so I can just peel the dry glue right off of the brush, so it makes cleanup really easy. And on the other end here is this spatula looking thing, which is great for getting glue into domino mortises and other types of joinery. And you know what? This thing is only $5 on Rockler's website, so I definitely recommend getting one or two or 20. But anyway, if you want to step up your glue game, the thing I've been using for the past couple years is this glue bottle with the same silicon brush on the top. And with this, I can just squeeze the bottle and wipe the glue on with the brush. It's 
just super convenient. And this comes as part of Rockler's glue applicator set, and everything in this kit can be put directly onto tight bond 16 and 32 ounce bottles, which I thought was a really nice touch. Now, one complaint I have with this is I wish Rockler sold just this separately. Um, maybe I'm blind, but <laughs> I could find the bottle with all the other attachments sold separately except the one with this brush. So if you want to get this, then you're going to have to spend $22 on the whole kit. Um, I don't know. You decide whether or not that's worth it. Maybe you want to use the other attachments as well. Then in which case, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely worth it. So yeah, um, these are the 10 tools I have around the shop that cost less than $30 and I use them all the time. And I feel every woodworker could benefit from one or two of these in their shop as well. And you know what? I had a lot of fun making this video. Let me know in the comments if there are any other cheap tools in your shop that you feel I should have included in this video. I would love to try it out. Um, remember to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.